Good. So, welcome to Clark. We will be hearing Eric um, Sehestahin, uh, who has been working for as an IT consultant for more than 15 years, mostly in source code aud auditing and penetration testing. Already this year, he has spoken at Nullcon, uh, Warcon, Defcon, and the climax of the year must definitely be here at the CCC. We'll be hearing about in Soviet Russia, smart card hacks you. Looking forward to the talk and to your questions later. Give him a big round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, she already introduced me. Uh, my name is Eric. Um, I'm a um, long time uh, CCC uh, Wiesbaden, or formerly Mainz, uh, member, and uh, come to a Congress uh, since a while. I have to confess this. This is the first time I'm scared and nervous. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and I'm, it's wonderful how all the, the CCC Congress thing grew all the years and, and evolved, and it's so nice being here each year. It's, uh, it's fabulous. Thank you for all the helpers. Um, <laughs> Smart cards have been a topic at Congress since um, even before 19C3, but uh, before then there are no uh, recordings and also the early ones, you might not really want to watch them. But um, it's a reoccurring topic and if you, have, um, if you are thirsty for more information, go to the, the media recordings. Um, the, some of the talks are very interesting and very good. Um, when you look at the history of um, smart card hacking, most of the attacks focus on the smart card, and uh, this talk is about a different approach. So the, the issues I'm presenting have been fixed. I, um, I reported them to the proper projects and um, helped them uh, to, to close the, the issues. And I mostly looked at open source projects because I think if you are a proprietary vendor and uh, make money, money by selling software, you should also pay somebody to uh, have the software secured. There's one exception. <clears throat> there, there's one exception to this um, because a friend of mine has to use a certain smart card driver, so I had a quick peek um, at it. But uh, in the few evenings, I didn't find any serious security issues, but uh, some crashes, but those help to illustrate some concepts. That's why I present them here. Um, what, what are smart cards or where are they used? Most of the few probably know them from EC cards, from your credit card. The, the younger generation maybe more from the SIM cards you use in your mobile phone. Um, sometimes for, for the old, older generation here, you use them in the, um, in the payphone. In Germany, we also use them for healthcare. Uh, and um, another use case for smart cards is uh, authentication. So you use them as a second factor. If you log into your Linux system, you use a password and you use a smart card. And um, the, the password somebody can steal from you if they look over your sh shoulder or if they have a keylocker installed. But if you have the second factor, the smart card, they need to capture both. And um, that's harder, so the, the whole setup is, to be, is considered to be more secure. And I, I looked mostly at this login uh, scenario. And um, an interesting part of this login process is that it completely runs as root. So if you find bugs there, you can instantly log in as root instead of just um, one single user for, for which you maybe uh, have captured a password. And there's a certain um, interesting psychological element to it as well. The, the programmers for the smart cards, they also see this um, secure device, this uh, trustworthy device, and they trust it as well when um, passing the responses. So they tend to make mistakes they maybe might not make when programming, um, for example, network drivers. And um, yeah, why not uh, abuse that? In order to do so, we have to understand uh, the whole smart card stack. What uh, layers are there? What um, parts are there to the whole communication? And um, we will now go through each of these layers, and um, I give you a few words to this. <clears throat> in, in general, you have a tamper-proof device. Um, the, the vendors who build those smart cards um, try to ensure that all the secrets that are stored in the microchip on the smart card remain there, right? And um, in the past, most attacks were like um, 
um, trying to, to glitch the smart card or trick it somehow into revealing the secrets that are stored on the smart card. And um, you have some pins that uh, power on the chip in the, in the smart card and have an I.O. pin to communicate. And uh, for this communication, you need a certain protocol that the smart card and the computer understand. And this, is, um, this protocol consists of APDUs. It's um, basically small packets or small commands you send to the smart card. The, the first byte is a class byte that um, specifies whether the command is um, from a standard or whether it's uh, vendor specific. Um, the ins byte, is, that's the instruction, basically encodes the, yeah, says, okay, this is the following command. For example, if you have hex 20, that's a verify command. You send, a, you send uh, the pin to the, the smart card and tell it, okay, this is my pin, please um, unlock yourself. You have uh, two parameters where you can specify additional information and um, can also send uh, further data. <coughs> Um, the, the smart card then answers those uh, commands with um, a blob of data, usually. And at the end of the data, there are two bytes um, telling the computer whether this uh, command executed successfully, that's uh, 9000, or if there um, occurred a certain error. And um, one of the responses that's interesting, for example, is uh, 61, because it says, okay, um, I have sent you something, but I still have more bytes to you. Um, as I say, for or encode that um, there are yeah, some errors that encode something went wrong, I can't give you more information, and others tell you, okay, you tried to log in, and you failed, and you have one try left to do so. <coughs> On top of this, you need an abstraction layer for the, for the smart card reader. And this is um, PCSC. That's an API you can use to send those APDUs to the smart card. The, um, there, there are some, um, some more um, functions that allow you to um, query the reader whether a card is inserted or get notified if a card is removed. But the most interesting for me was the transmit uh, function, where you basically pass two buffers, two lengths, and one buffer is the one with the data that is sent to the smart card, and the other one is the buffer with the data that you retrieve from the smart card. And uh, the nice thing is this um, abstraction layer is the same on Windows and on Linux. On top of that, you usually have another abstraction layer that um, doesn't talk about smart cards anymore, but about cryptographic tokens. And um, you can use a smart card there, you can use a soft token, and um, this one is also like yeah standardized. Um, your browser uses it. Um, OpenSSL uses it via another abstraction layer, and it's also quite generic. And um, if you write a driver for a smart card, you usually um, implement this interface and use the PCSC interface to talk to the smart card. And each of each smart <coughs> sorry. Each uh, smart card, when inserted, sends a certain command string, um, an answer to reset, and this encodes um, some basic information about the smart card, how to talk to it, but also some history, historic bytes, where you can, um, which you can use to see which vendor the smart card belongs to or what kind of smart card it is. And the driver uses this information to know whether the driver is responsible to handle the smart card or is able to handle a certain smart card. How does the lock-in process usually work? <coughs> usually you have something like PEM um, that uh, your GD, uh, that your, um, your graphical console uses or your um, shell login uses to um, handle certain ways to do authorization. And um, the PEM library first tries to enumerate all the certificates on the smart card. And if uh, one of the certificates matches a certain user that is allowed to log in on the system, the um, a revocation check is performed to see if the certificate is really still valid or if it's maybe revoked by the, by the CA. If the certificate is valid and um, the user 
that matches, uh, matches it um, is allowed to log in on the system. The computer generates a noun that's a, a number only used once and um, is usually a random bit string. And a smart card is asked to um, generate a signature for this nonce. If the smart card was able to do this, um, we know that the smart card contains the private key matching the certificate. And if that's the case, the user is allowed to log in. Um, let's start with the proprietary driver I looked at a bit. Um, in Spain, there is a national ID card, and they have a smart card chip on this as well. And um, as far as I understood, my friend, um, they are forced to use this for certain actions. I'm not sure what uh, legal um, issues there are, where you have to use it, but um, yeah, he complained quite a lot that he's forced to use it, so I took a quick look. <coughs> um, the, the stuff was released, at, this, at least for Linux, um, like 10 years ago. So the um, binaries they ship, it's... Um, um, uh, it's a library, it's not really hardened, or um, as you can see, there are no canaries. Um, so, um, yeah, it's a technology from like 10 years ago. Um, the library uses uh, two open source libraries as well. One is a crypto library that um, has known vulnerabilities. I'm not sure if any of them are really matter for the, for the use case, but um, yeah, at least they did not bother to um, create an update. The other one is an ASN1 parser, and from the size of uh, those two additional libraries, you see there's a lot of attack surface in the driver, right? Um, there's a lot the driver does to do its work. And um, yeah, at least for the open source crowd, I guess it's interesting that they don't have a copyright notice um, explaining that they use open source, so yeah. <laughs> um, I, I toyed around a bit with it. I didn't do extensive fuzzing or something, but um, just tried some, some easy things. For example, um, sometimes the, um, the driver asks for a response and um, tries to retrieve data from the card. And uh, what happens if the card answers with, um, yeah, I have more data for you, um, please request another zero bytes from me the driver will happily do that. And um, so you can create an endless loop where um, you play this ping pong all the time, right? Um, it's not serious, but I guess there might be cases where you could uh, do a denial of service by just inserting a smart card that always replies with, I have zero more data for you and just keep the device busy, right? Um, but usually when doing security, um, denial of service is not interesting. So you try to give the system some bytes to do work with, right? So the next thing I tried was um, say, okay, I have um, 255 bytes for you and um, did it in an endless loop. And whenever the, the, card, uh, the, the driver requests more data, I gave them another 252 bytes of bogus shit. Um, at a certain point, it uh, just crashed because the, the, um, it tried to allocate a buffer that was too, too big. Um, but that was, um, yeah, nothing um, that, that seemed to be exploitable. But um, in other cases, it might have been, right? Um, another issue there is um, if you reply, hey, this command worked, and um, you don't send any data but signal with the 9000 um, response code that everything worked and is fine, um, you can, um, at least for, the, for this driver, generate a um, nine pointer D reference and a crash. Um, not, not really interesting, but it shows where, where things can go wrong, right? Um, there, there's a lot of um, other issues um, I found where things don't go the way they should. Um, none of them seem to be exploitable. That's why I'm easy about talking here um, without having the vendor notified. But um, yeah, it shows that in, um, if you look a bit at uh, proprietary software, they seem to have similar issues. <clears throat> but uh, my main focus was on um, open source software. Um, these are the different drivers I looked at. Um, the the OpenSC one stands out a bit, but that's because they support a whole range of smart cards. They have drivers for a lot of different smart cards, so the attack surface is quite huge. And I think the project's, um, project has, exists for 20 years or something like that. So um, some of the code is quite old as well. 
Um, for for OpenSC, um, I have to thank uh, Frank Morgner for doing all the coordination and fixing and everything, because with um, this wide range of smart cards, you can imagine that uh, there's not one single developer with a huge stack with all of the smart cards, but it's like, I don't know, 20, 30 people where everybody has two different smart cards and want to do the want to do a new release and want to do the QEA for the for the new release it's um, it's a lot of work of um, to, to coordinate all this um, yeah apple apple uh, was quite interesting uh, when i notified them about the bug they um, silently patched it um, as far as i understand uh, the code is not used in um, in um, the, the current uh, um, current um, machines they are shipping um, apparently, it was used um, in the past, and um, yeah, I had to ask them again to, to um, yeah, at least do a change log entry that it's security related. And um, I tried to query them if it's actually in use somewhere or not, but um, I didn't get a response out of them. Um, what happens here? Um, it's a while loop that um, continues to loop until the, the card signals um, that um, it. Uh, no longer has additional data left. And as long as the card sends data, this data is uh, copied into a buffer by the mem copy. So, um, as, and yeah, the, the whole trust, um, the, the developer who wrote that, um, he put a lot of trust in the smart card to stop sending when it's done and basically trust it with uh, what it does. But uh, the card can just continue to um, say, hey, I still have more, um, more data for the certificate and do a, um, heap overflow in this case, and um, corrupt the, the heap. Um, another one of the, the issues um, I, I think are interesting in the OpenSC stack is uh, in the CryptoFlex tool. They um, have a fixed size buffer of uh, 2048 bytes, and they um, use a helper function, the select file function, to um, get some meta information about the file. And one information is the file size. And um, when they read the binary, they use the size that the card said um, the, the file has instead of the size of the buffer. So if the car card says the file is um, five kilobytes, then the buffer will obviously overflow. And um, for this, I have a small demonstration. <coughs> the, the tool is um, a helper tool that's used to, um, for example, list the keys that are on the card or um, yeah, for, for other stuff. So as you can see, if you uh, try to read a key from the card, the, the, um, um, the memory gets corrupt and it's possible to execute arbitrary code. It's not a, not a scenario that you would think somebody would um, exploit in the wild. But um, yeah, it's a nice use case. Um, another um, vendor is Ubico. They also um, generate or um, they, they ship or sell small devices where you have a smart card and the smart card reader basically combined. So they have a nice form factor of a USB stick. And uh, one of their drivers, they, they have this code um, that's a helper function for all the times where data is retrieved from the smart card. And um, they also do a mem copy of the retrieved data into the, the buffer, the, the caller supplies. And um, as you can clearly see, they, they have a check whether the data already received is um, bigger than the size of the buffer. And if that's the case, they print a nice error message and continue to copy the data into the buffer, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, the, the fix is obviously easy, um, but uh, yeah, those are mistakes that uh, commonly happen during programming, right? And um, I hope the second proof of concept is uh, you can read most of it. Um, this is now for, for the classical Linux login. Um, 
we don't care about username. Um, as soon as uh, PEM starts to query the, the smart card, the, the driver gets active and copies data. And um, I have the, the debug um, output on and um, also slowed it down a bit to help me while doing all this. And um, <coughs> after a while, you see that uh, we uh, trigger the, the error message. That's uh, now the error message. The output buffer is too small. And um, I keep continue to write stuff. And zack. at the end, um, I also get a code execution. And the nice thing is, if you can read it, um, I'm root, since the whole login runs as root. Um, how do you exploit this in white? Um, the, the easy way would be to um, um, to um, yeah use custom hardware that allows you to interact with the smart card reader and everything. But um, this would also require you to have maybe some wires that uh, leave the, the reader, which would be fine for the Linux login. But if you think about ATMs or something, that might not work or access control systems. So um, what I Uh, used um, this basic card. Um, yes, you have to write in basic, but um, you can do all the smart card stuff that you want to do. And um, the most important thing is that you can um, fully customize the, the RTR. So um, basically, you can um, can say uh, or can have every driver except your card, which is not the case with all smart cards. Um, use um, yeah, this um, on the Lower part, you declare the um, historical bytes of the ATR. Um, in this case, for the for the OpenSC driver, and you also declare the, the functions um, that uh, are the, the APDUs. Um, in this case, if you have a in a upper case, if you have a class byte of C zero and an instruction byte of A 4 the my select file function is called, and there can pass the parameters and also generate a response as I want to. Um, this is the select file where, can, um, where I pass which file the driver wants to select and um, select my, in this case, static uh, response automatically. Um, the code is, um, of course, kind of silly for, for, this, um, for this command. But um, if you want to see how it works and how to interact with a smart card reader or a smart card driver, um, it's available for you. <coughs> um, how do you find bugs in smart card drivers? One, one way is to um, do manual source code auditing. That's part of what I did. Um, the other part was fuzzing. Um, in a very yeah, easy way, fuzzing is like sending lots of lots of um, bogus data to a driver until it crashes. And um, if uh, most helper tools for that are file oriented, right? They are not um, designed to work with protocols where you send several packets um, to a card and get, get a response and send another packet. So you have the challenge of um, converting the, the file input the fuzzer generates to something that looks like protocol data. And here the nice thing is that the uh, SCART transmit uh, wrapper actually tells you how much data the, the receiving end, um, the, the driver, wants to read. So what I did was um, simply get the uh, always fill this buffer to the end with, um, with data from a file. And um, since, it's, uh, you don't, since it's not network oriented, you don't need to take care of polling or something similar. You can just uh, copy the buffer. And um, that's what it looks like. For, for OpenSC, I generated a um, virtual reader. And this virtual reader interacts with the fuzzer. So um, I used AFL for fuzzing, um, which also does uh, code coverage to see whether an input file is interesting or not. And um, yeah, that, that's what I um, ran most of the time to uh, find bugs in the OpenSC project. Um, I also tried to, uh, or another tried I um, did, I um, programmed a library that you can preload on Linux or on Windows and have the smart card driver interact with uh, your code instead of the real smart card 
uh, of the instead of the real reader, and um, you can also use this to um, fuss uh, yeah, more or less arbitrary smart card drivers. Um, but not enough. Um, last year, somebody Tavis uh, ported uh, parts of Windows Defender, the antivirus, uh, to Linux, and um, Basically, he tried to get um, the code he wanted to fuzz run in a very small environment, so you don't have much overhead. When fuzzing, it's always nice to be able to do a lot of iterations in a short time, because the, fast, um, the faster you can fuzz certain code, um, the more likely you are to find bugs, because you can just try more, more random data. And um, I have beaten this library um, enough to be able to load um, Windows drivers or Windows smart card drivers on Linux for fuzzing. Um, there are some exceptions. If you have a .NET driver, um, it will not work um, because it depends on lots of additional other libraries. But um, everything that's uh, plain C should work more or less. <coughs> um, yeah, all the fuzzers are released. Um, you can download them play around with them, and um, if some, uh, something does not work, just uh, send me an email, I'll try to help you. Um, yeah, this is what uh, AFL looks like when you do fuzzing. Um, I had run it for, um, yeah, I, I think in total 28 days or something, and uh, um, was able to shake a lot of uh, bugs out of OpenSC. But um, when you look at the coverage report, um, the coverage is uh, 30% which um, I think is not too shabby um, when you think about that uh, the, um, the answers have to be correct for a lot of different um, requests, right? At the beginning, the, the smart card driver usually tries to verify that the card is really something um, he is allowed to interact with, tries to open some files and uh, um, reads them, and um, it... Um, or um, it takes like 10 commands or so before the interesting stuff happens, like um, the, the, the enumeration of certificates, right? So I was kind of quite surprised that it got that far. And um, yeah, on the lower case, there are several things that um, have zero coverage. But in this case, these are um, PKCS15 functions which I didn't touch at all. Some of them are um, drivers that are not um, enabled by default in OpenSC. But on the lower end, um, for, for some of the, the drivers, the, the code coverage was um, quite high. I was uh, actually quite surprised that um, I was able to reach it with a simple setup. I didn't hand tune the input corpus. I just drew in two sample files and from there it basically found its way to be able to fuzz a lot of different and reach a lot of different functions. <coughs> so um, it's not only the drivers that are interesting um, in this whole setup, but also the, the helper or the, the upper layers, for example, the, the PEM um, functions, the PEM modules. Um, one of them that you can use to uh, um, log in with a smart card is uh, PEM PKCS11. And um, the, the whole process looks quite similar, but it differs in one point. Um, and that's where the, the nonce is generated. When you generate a nonce, you want good randomness, because if um, an attacker is able to replay a nonce or grab a nonce, and um, um, the, this nonce and the signature is used again later, it's possible to replay this and um, abuse that. And what the programmer did here was, um, yeah, he needed a lot of uh, good entropy, so he had this uh, small security module that is able to generate an entropy, right? So basically he asked, or they asked uh, the smart card to generate the random data, and then asked the smart card again to um, do the signature. So if an attacker controls a computer that the victim logs into, um, the attacker gets a nonce and a signature for this nonce, and then can um, yeah, modify his own smart card to um, replay this at another machine, right? So, um, yeah, that, that was also an interesting bug where you can see the psychology of the, the developer trusting the small device but not thinking about what he does. <coughs> um, there are some roadblocks when you want to do exploitation um, against uh, the drivers. One is that um, the data sent to the card is usually quite small. And um, if you need uh, an information leak for exploitation, for example, 
this is um, not easy to do. You don't have uh, interaction because you have no keyboard on the smart card or no display. But um, if you can get wires out of the reader, SIM trays is something that you can use. Um, there's a firmware that uh, allows you to not only um, do a man in the middle on the communication, but um, send whatever you like. But uh, the advantage you have is that you don't need um, necessarily to do um, full code execution. In the end, you just need to flip the, the few bytes of memory that say, OK, this user is locked in. So that's um, an advantage for the attacker. What, what I learned from um, all this is um, I um, always advocated smart cards as a good thing and um, always thought of it as a good uh, two-factor model, but um, never really thought about um, the uh, increase of tech surface, surface um, that happens when you deploy smart card authentication. Um, it's a bit similar with antivirus, right? Antivirus helps you for your security, but um, yeah, if your antivirus has a bug, um, that's also quite serious. Um, if you use uh, OpenSC, there um, is a config option that you can use to blacklist um, or, or whitelist drivers. So you only run the driver that you actually use in your setup. And this um, would greatly reduce your attack surface. And um, yeah, the, the Ubico guys um, did the right thing. They, they, um, write the newer drivers in Python instead of C, and there you don't have all those um, memory corruption bugs that um, lead to code execution. So if you have the possibility to do that, go for it. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, <clears throat> if you have any questions. And uh, yeah, I, I don't use Twitter. Um, the only social network somebody tricked me into using is LinkedIn, so sorry for that. <laughs> and we have five microphones for questions, and we have about five minutes. So get up and stand behind the microphones if you have any questions. There is one microphone number one, two, four, three, and five. And the exits are the two ones to the left. There is a question from microphone number one. Yes, I have a question that's maybe it's a little bit weird, but maybe try such a thing with a RFID card because there are many places that have smart card readers and they have like your doors, for example. You need to present a card and then maybe you have a card that fuzzes the reader of the door. Um, as far as I know, for the contacted smart cards, the, the whole protocol is similar, but I didn't play around with that. Um, I'm, I'm too old-fashioned to use the wireless technology if I can avoid it, so that's... Okay. Uh, Okay. Yeah. Good. And for those of you leaving, please leave quietly so that we can do the Q&A. There is another question for microphone number one. Uh, maybe haven't you tried uh, putting a simple microcontroller to do your bidding uh, easier than a basic card? Do you know maybe a kind of framework that uh, could be used instead of this one? Um, yeah, I think the, the, um, the, the SimTrace uh, stuff is what you want to do. I... Um, have not tried the firmware, they just released the second version of it. Um, I guess that's what I would go for. Um, uh, a friend is um, also thinking about doing a custom PCB. Um, yeah, I guess there are a lot of options. Um. Or maybe even hacking Jet, the... Uh, we have a couple of more questions yeah. waiting. So, uh, quest uh, come, come, uh, come to me later and we can talk. And there's a question for microphone number two. Uh, yes, uh, your talk is mostly about uh, malicious cards attacking a compromised reader. Uh, is there any uh, possibility at this point to get uh, an RSA key or anything like this out of a card, or so far this seems still secure? Um, that's not what I looked at. Um, I'm, I'm not a hardware guy. Um, there were people in the past, um, the, the talk of uh, Carsten Noll at, um, uh, at one of the camps was quite good about where he talks about um, decapping the chip and adding probes to, yeah. But I'm a software guy, sorry. <laughs> Question from microphone number one. Is the PKCS protocols and the PCSC software stack too complicated? And could it be replaced with something simpler? I, I don't think it's the software stack. The problem is that um, you have a lot of 
weird data that the cards send to the driver. In some cases, it's um, ASN1 encoded. Sometimes it's um, zipped. Sometimes the vendor does proprietary, whatever. And um, all this parsing is, um, I guess, where a lot of problems happen. We have a second question uh, for microphone number one of two. But if you have a second question and didn't get time to ask it before, there's time enough to stand up behind the microphone and ask it again. Microphone number two. Um, thank you very much for the talk. One question, you showed that the vulnerabilities in the driver, would that mean that every PC which allows smart card authentication, even if you don't use it, is vulnerable to a root lock-in by this uh, vulnerability? <clears throat> no, um, usually uh, you have to install the drivers. Um, on Linux, they are not um, installed by default. On um, Windows as well, they aren't. Um, on Windows, sometimes it's quite hard to actually get access to the drivers because the, the vendors are very often keeping them only for selling customers and stuff like that. It's, I don't know why they do that, but um, it seems like a business model for them. Yeah. But usually the, the stuff is not installed by default. You have to actually enable it, at least on, on win Windows and Linux. I don't know if, about macOS. We still have time for a few more questions, so please get up behind the microphones if you have more questions. Question from microphone number one. Yes, uh, the double thing is uh, um, regarding this RFID cards. I'm just thinking there are some applications where you can use an NFC controller in your Android phone to simulate an NFC card. So just use the basic card to simulate the smart card. So it should be possible to use this NFC smart card emulator to do this fuzzing with RFID cards. Would you think this would be a good approach? Um, I, I didn't do the, the fuzzing from the basic card. The basic card was only used to exploit it because um, when, when doing fuzzing, you want to do a lot of iterations. So you want to do, uh, trigger as many code paths as quickly as possible. And how um, do you interface it? So um, you, I guess you can do that. Um, I, I think the, the basic card guys also sell a um, 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 uh, contactless uh, version. Um, I don't have it. Mm -hmm. So, but. Um, yeah, I guess the, the attack surface um, f with this is quite huge. You can, could uh, think about um, attacking the firmware on your mobile phone via a bad SIM card, maybe to unlock it if it's, uh, I don't know, right? It's, um, Good. Do we have any more questions? Please get up behind the microphones. It seems like we've all run out and there are no questions from the internet either. So please give Eric a big round of applause. Thank you. Thank <clears throat> you.